Siguran sam da je najpoznatiji stanovnik Hrvatske koji je u stvari Britanac. Isto tako možda je većini poznat po tužbi Hrvatske turističke zajednice za slogan Croatia full of uhljebs, koji je zajednica nažalost izgubila. Šta sam još zapisao? Osnivač i urednik portala Total News Croatia, rekao bi svjetski putnik, u deset zemalja od 96, ako se ne varam koje opišao i je živio, nagrađivani pisac, storyteller, javni govornik, youtuber, konzultant i u stvari ono što je meni osobno najdraže i najzanimljivije od svega, strastveni, ali baš strastveni promotor Hrvatske. Ako do sad niste imali priliku, pogledajte na YouTube-u, bit će vam jasno o čemu pričam. Molim vas da toplim i velikim aplauzom pozdravimo gospodina Pola Weberija. Considering how long you have been living in Croatia, I should probably call you, uh, or in Dalmatia, I should probably call you Shior or Barba. <laughs> Barba, Paul, uh, the stage is yours. You, you should call me Traitor because now I live in Zagreb, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a former model, now become Burger, so uh, I apologize in advance. Ako vam ne smeta, ja ću dali na engleskom. Kao vi znate, Hrvatski je svjetski jezik koji mi govori samo naj najinteligentni ljudi na svijetu. Nisam ja toliko inteligentni, ali trudim se. Hvala. Hvala za introduciju. Mi se učinim mnogo 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 mnogo. To je naša prvi mnogo 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 mnogo. Um, I also know a lot less about hospitality than everybody else in this room, mm -hmm. so I was kind of wondering what should I t talk to you about today. Um, I've lived in your beautiful country now for 21 years, and uh, I thought maybe I would talk a little bit about the customer service and the customer experience in Croatia through foreign eyes. So um, I thought I would talk about my best customer uh, service experiences in Croatia. I want to go back to my first ever customer service experience in Croatia and look at how things have changed in the 21 years since I had that. I also then want to look at um, quickly about the regions of Croatia, Slavonia versus Dalmatia and so on. And then I have a couple of um, customer experience examples that were created from nothing, which are signs of real excellence here in, uh, in, in Croatia. Um, and then I want to look at how customer service experience uh, was 20 years ago with a company called Hrvatski Telekom. <laughs> <laughs> um, and th they don't know the story, so I'm telling this, telling this for the first time. And actually, because of this customer experience story, even though I have had some problems with Hrvatski Telekom over the years, no. I'm still a loyal customer 20 years later. <laughs> so the scene is 2004, in the winter in Yelsa on the bar. Um, I have two young children. I'm working as a blogger and the internet goes down. And uh, my wife calls up and we're told it'll be seven days until somebody can come around and have a look. And I wasn't so unhappy because it meant that I could escape the children, go down to a cafe, have a beer, and continue my work. The next day, however, it was a real problem because my wife was in split and I had to look after these two kids. So, and I had a deadline, so I took them down to this smoky cafe in, in Yelza, and they were running around, and I was trying to get my work done. And uh, I thought, how am I going to fix this? So I posted on Facebook, and I said, does anyone have a Croatian solution to my problem? And a friend of mine who's a journalist said, here is the email address of the PR of Hrvatsky.com. Uh, send an email there, they really hate that publicity, and I guarantee something will happen. So I wrote a very polite email saying I was a loving father of two, two young kids who was known to being filled with smoke as, as things went on. I was also a blogger, um, a foreign resident, and I'd had bad experiences before, and I knew others that had had bad experiences, and all I wanted to do was to get my work done. But um, 
seven days, could, could they possibly do something? I didn't want to write a negative article on my portal about could I speak to Telegram. Could, could they do something? But two minutes later, an email saying, we're very sorry to hear about your problem. We'll be back to you in half an hour. 30 minutes later, internet was restored. Mm. So from seven days to 30 minutes. And I was really, really impressed at that, uh, that level of, um, you know, of response. Um, <clears throat> six months later, a friend of mine um, called me and he said, Are you okay, Mike? Yeah. Later, um, a friend of mine called me, he had a, a travel agency in Stalingrad, and he said, what was it you did with Ratsky Telecom that got such a quick response? And I said, um, let me try it for you. So I sent an email to the lady, <laughs> copying my friend, and you said, I said, dear Maya, you said if there's anything you can do to help in the future, meet Daddy Wall. He's been told nine days. <laughs> and um, three hours later, Daddy Wall calls me and he says, man, you're a magician. <laughs> in three hours. And so when it was done, he said to the engineer, why is it we were told nine days and then you came up for three hours? And he said, I'm under strict instructions that when that fat English asshole <laughs> jumps the night, <laughs> so, <laughs> And this, this taught me something that I've learned in Croatia, sadly, uh, a thing called public shaming. And so a lot of people will do anything to avoid negative publicity, but they really don't like, um, they don't really deal with the common person here in Croatia that well. And some people may say, because I'm a blogger or because I'm well known, I'm using my position. But um, a few months after that, sorry, in 2013, just after we joined the EU, I went to register my car. Uh, I, I bought it from Germany. And I went into the uh, Tsarina, and there were eight different offices, you know, Petra, Petra, Petra. And <laughs> I went into this one office, I knocked, no answer, I opened the door, there was an old guy, 50s, cigarettes, behind the computer, you've all had the experience. <laughs> and I said, oh, across the theater of me, Nicky, Nicky, Petra. And he just looked at me, and he went back to his computer. <laughs> and I just thought, how can I get this kind of attention? So I said, um, Oprostite, ja sam novinar i pripremeni članak sad vezno ove carine u Hrvatskoj posli Hrvatsku uniju. I ako vi imate neki rečenicu za mene, i ako ja mogu slikati nešto. And I lifted my my camera and he said, no photos, give me the paper, boom. So, again, that idea of public shaming was something I thought was a possibility. So, I then wrote an article for Index talking about this, and I said, this is not me because I'm famous or because I'm a journalist. Every, all these, all these um, older people in these public positions, they are very afraid of words like blogging, social media, Facebook, viral, because they don't understand it. And so if you go in and you say, I'm writing a blog about this, there'll be alarm bells will go off. And I said, try it. And I had five different emails from Croats, I didn't even know, who read the article and said, it works. <laughs> so it was, quite, it was quite nice to see that, that work, understand what they have. So he was with a group of rich Jewish New York guys, and they were in Olive Grove in uh, Onfoy, having lunch. And this Jewish guy looked and he said, is that a lemon tree? And um, the guy said, yeah. Would it be okay if I picked a lemon? And my friend said, pick six. And he said, wow, thank you. And he went off and he picked six lemons. And at the end of the week, he said, this was the best week I've ever had, the best tour I've ever been on. But I want to tell you what was the absolute best experience of my time in Croatia on this trip, picking that lemon. Because I live in Brooklyn, and the only lemons I ever see are in cocktail bars and supermarkets. <laughs> and to actually have that connection with that was absolutely magical. And my friend, who is an entrepreneur and a bright guy, thought, this is genius. It costs nothing to pick a lemon. <laughs> and I can charge 300 euros for the, for the experience and there's nothing in between. <laughs> and so here you have another brilliant Dalmatian uh, business that uh, doesn't take much work. Um, <laughs> but that's... Uh, 
that to me really taught me that in Croatia you have so much magic and so many local people do not see that magic and one of the, one of the videos I made from a YouTube channel um, is called 10 Things Croatia Does Better Than Any Other Country which has got about 3 or 4 million views now and the number of people from the diaspora were like thank you for reminding me about what is amazing about Croatia because all we hear is the negative stuff and if you can focus on the positive stuff here acknowledge the negative stuff for sure but there is so much positive stuff here it's, it's fantastic the other customer experience thing which I only learned about properly was in May this year when I went to Istria um, for a week and I contacted the Istrian Tourist Board and I said I don't know Istria as well as I should and I think it would be better for you and for me if I knew Istria better so I could promote it better so would you like to give me a week show me what you have to show me and then I will give you a video called 25 reasons you should never visit Istria which is part of the video series I do and in that week I was blown away to see how Istria has developed really high-end tourism from absolutely nothing in 30 years. So I never knew, for example, that in 1995, most of inland Istria was totally deserted, or you know, but very, very few people living there, a lot of abandoned villages and so on. And um, it wasn't really known for its wine, olives, truffles, anything. It wasn't really known for, uh, for too much. There was a lot of tourism on the coast, but not really inland. Um, and in 1998, a guy called um, Claudio Ipsi, um from the village of Ipsia, planted 1,100 olive trees. And everyone thought he was nuts. Um, in 2005, seven years later, he was the first Croatian ever to get a mention in the top 500 olive oil producers in the world in Flossole, which is like the Michelin, the Michelin Guide for Olive Oil. That was in 2005. For the last nine years, Istria has had more than 50 of the top 500. So, the last nine years, it's been the best region in the world. In 1999, uh, Giancarlo Zigante um, was taking his dog, the Anna, who uh, was uh, truffle hunting, and they found a truffle which is 1.3 kilos. The biggest truffle ever found in this book of records. Suddenly, Istria was on the world map for truffles. And then in uh, 1994, Kozlovic started really sort of um, trying to promote quality wine. He won the first national award in 1997, and that was the beginning of the quality Istrian wine industry. So today you look at Istria and you say it's, it's, a, um, it's a region of olive oil, of wine, and of uh, truffles, which is true, but 30 years ago it really wasn't. And what Istria has done, uh, I was speaking to the people involved, is they've really tried to say, we don't have quantity, so we have to focus on quality. They've only got 200,000 people there, and I think they've got like 40% of the tourism now. But what's really interesting, to me at least, is all these inland villages which were abandoned. People are planting olives, and then people want to try wine, and then they want something to eat, and somewhere to stay. And so all these olive producers and wine producers are now um, building uh, restaurants, boutique hotels, uh, and things like that. They're, 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 and they're buying their products from local producers, all the eggs and so on like that. So there is this ecosystem of really high quality, which is um, which is developing.